Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm the owner and surgeon for Lazar Veterinary Surgery. I'm going to talk about cranial cruciate ligament tears in dogs and cats, and then uh, after which I'll talk about surgical repair. Uh, I want to start out by thanking Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to use their um, illustrations. This is a wonderful app on the iPad uh, called uh, DIA. Uh, what we're looking at here is a tear of what we call the cranial cruciate ligament in dogs and cats. In people it's the ACL, it's the same structure in uh, dogs and cats with a slightly different name. The structure on the right is normal and on the left it's torn. The way we uh, make the diagnosis of a cruciate ligament tear is with a particular manipulation called cranial drawer. And I'm going to show that here. The two bones above and below the knee joint, the femur and the tibia. And if I put my hands above and below and I can elicit this type of manipulation called the drawer sign, it is really conclusive for a cruciate ligament tear. And so it in a complete tear, it can be a very easy diagnosis to make. In a partial tear, it can be a little bit uh, more challenging in some uh, situations. Now, as far as the big question is, why did this happen? Usually there's some event running in the yard, playing with another dog. Uh, however, in dogs, uh, it's typically a slow degenerative condition. It's falling apart for, right now, unknown reasons. Uh, there may have been some event but it tends to be fairly minor in nature, and if it wasn't that event, it could have been something the next day or the next week. This is different than it is in people. Uh, in people, it's uh, a normal ligament that's torn with a skiing accident, car accident, some sudden trauma. In cats, we also tend to see this sudden traumatic form rather than the slow degenerative cause in dogs. It doesn't really matter why it tears. The repair is still the same, but it's important to realize this condition in dogs because many of these dogs will end up tearing the other knee. Statistically, there's about a 40% chance that the other knee will have the same problem, and very commonly it occurs within a year. Sometimes they're torn at about the same time, and sometimes we will repair both at the same time. Uh, the typical uh, signalment or uh, presentation on a dog is um, a small, medium, or large breed, basically any dog, uh, the ages that we see are typically three to eight years of age, although we certainly see dogs as young as a year of age or even a little bit younger, and we see some older dogs, 10, 12, even 14 years of age. There's another structure in the knee called the medial meniscus. Uh, there are actually several structures, but that's the most noteworthy because we very commonly will see that tear. As that drawer manipulation occurs, uh, it will commonly cause a tear in the back part of the meniscus. It's really impossible to identify in most situations on a physical exam, uh, although sometimes we will uh, appreciate a popping sensation which could be characteristic of that. It's something though that we do need to identify at the time of surgery because if it's torn we need to remove the torn portion. So now I'm going to talk about a surgical technique called the TTA, which stands for Tibial Tuberosity Advancement. This technique falls under the category of an osteotomy procedure, osteotomy meaning cutting the bone. So it's a very interesting technique in that we won't be repairing the cruciate ligament exactly, but rather we, we will change the anatomy, change the way the forces are acting at the knee so that we don't need the cruciate ligament in the first place. And uh, this actually tends to be the better long-term solution. Um, let me go ahead and show a video and I'll describe as we go through. These are just some of the surrounding structures of importance uh, near the knee joint. So what we're doing in this procedure is we will drill some holes to begin with using a guide to uh, uh, make sure it's exactly as we like. And then this is the main part of the surgery. This is the, the tibial tuberosity, and we are cutting it so that we can change its position. Once we've made the cut, we will advance that portion of the bone by an amount that we determine from x-rays, uh, from exam, and uh, certainly at the time of surgery from looking at the appearance and size of the bone. These plates come in different sizes, all the implants being titanium. And the idea is we will fix the bone in that position, 
another structure will appear. This cage device forces it to stay in that fixed position and then the titanium bone plate will hold it still so that the bone will fill in the gap. Uh, what you will notice on exam once things are completely healed is that there will be a slight bump just below the knee and that is due to this portion of the bone that is being advanced forward. It causes no problems, no irritation, but uh, especially in a short hair dog you will appreciate th that slight difference. So once we have the anatomy altered in this position, the structures here in the front essentially will be taking over the job of the cruciate ligament and that seems to be the better long-term solution for uh, the cruciate ligament uh, deficiency or the injury in dogs and cats potentially as well. This medial meniscus structure we also need to address during surgery. What I perform is a procedure called a medial uh, meniscal release. I will actually make a cut in the back part of the meniscus it will address a tear if it's present and it will prevent a future tear is the, the secondary goal even if the meniscus is not injured. Uh, there is some debate on the best treatment for the meniscus. Some would advocate leaving the meniscus alone if it is not damaged but the risk is that many of these dogs will ultimately tear that structure which would then require a surgery in the future. So the meniscal release appears to be the best uh, method to uh, eliminate or at least significantly reduce the potential of a uh, second surgery. Now as far as complications, or I should say potential complications, we categorize them as minor or major. Minor would be bruising, swelling, some redness, uh, things that will slowly uh, or hopefully very quickly disappear over several days tend not to be particularly painful. Um, <clears throat> and then we talk about the major complications which are much more important and these are things such as implant breakages, a plate can break, screws can break, the cage can break, the bone can also break, the tibial tuberosity, I've seen that happen uh, and in very rare cases we could see a fracture of the uh, shaft of the tibia itself. Infection would be um, another uh, less common complication. Overall, the risk of a major complication is about 5%. The good news, though, is that the vast majority of these patients ultimately do not need another surgery. They will, we will identify the complication and we can typically treat it with pain medi medications, antibiotics, perhaps another set of x-rays if necessary. It may delay the healing, but tends not to change the final outcome. Now as far as the aftercare, uh, after surgery, you're looking at two months of restricted activity and the short version of that is no running, jumping, playing, no stairs, no jumping on furniture, certainly no playing with other dogs for that period. <clears throat> the uh, long version uh, perhaps is not as daunting. Uh, I think the initial focus is on the first month. Uh, that is the time period that we are most likely to see a complication. Uh, breaking down even further, the first two weeks is when we're waiting for the incision to heal. It's important to keep an Elizabethan collar, some type of cone around the head so that your pet is not able to pull out the stitches. At two weeks out, there should be some attempts at weight bearing. There will be some mild pressure on the foot and there should be a, a pretty good level of comfort at that point. Attitude should be much improved. Any swelling, bruising should hopefully be gone by that point. At two weeks out, we will start doing some slow leash walks and then that, do that for two weeks. At one month out, you'll recheck with your family veterinarian to get x-rays taken, make sure that the healing is progressing as we like. If it is, then we will increase the amount of walking, the speed, the distance, um, but still on the leash, still under control. That gets us to the six week point, so um, another two weeks of that, and we will bump up the activity even more. By this point, the limp should be fairly slight. I, I suspect you will see a limp with every step, but it will be dramatically improved from what it was a few weeks before. Once we get to the eight week point, you will recheck with your family veterinarian again for x-rays, and um, at that point, if the healing is progressing well, we will very quickly go back to normal activity. Generally, at eight weeks out, we can lift the restrictions in the house. Stair use should be fine. Jumping on furniture shouldn't be a problem, as long as it's not too high. But we still want to avoid excessive activity. I would still not allow playing with other dogs, uh, avoid running and chasing squirrels, but 
uh, off leash in the yard if it's just walking or slow trotting that should be okay. Over this next four weeks we will very quickly go back to normal activity. Longer walks, faster walks, so by three months out the limp should be gone and we should be able to go back to completely normal activity at that point. If there is still a little bit of a limp, well I always encourage you to contact me, um, but as long as things are improving uh, we probably don't have to worry. Uh, there is always some variability. Some dogs will get better quicker, some take a little bit longer. Um, so that is the uh, basic gist of the surgery, keeping in mind that there is some variation depending on your pet's specific needs and uh, assuming that you will be seeing me for a consultation and surgery, we'll talk about what's, how some of these specific needs may affect your pet surgery and um, you know, determine certainly whether this is the best technique to, uh, to have performed.